Hey hey, in anime here to talk about Platinum End Episode 2. And there's quite a bit to get into. So if you're ready, pull up a chair and let's discuss. Their power Episode 2 introduces us to a couple of new characters, mainly the anti-hero Metropoli Man. He's decked out in some nifty armor and seems to have mastered his angel powers. He puts them on full display in a few ways, when he uses multiple red arrows to manipulate a police squad into letting him take on a few bank robbers, uses his wings to fly around and avoid getting shot, and using his white killing arrow to blast a criminal into the afterlife. But before any of this, we witness him using his white arrow on another god contestant, Tomo Rodriguez. And this incident gives us a lot of insight into the contest and led me to develop a few questions. First, through Nase, we get insight into the angel hierarchy. There are tiers of angels and the special tier, a group she's a part of, was able to gift their representatives with all three angel abilities, red arrows, white arrows, and wings. Then the first rank angels, who are a tier under special, could only gift wings and red arrows. And the second rank angels can give either wings or arrows. It's obvious that this puts certain contestants at a disadvantage. Case in point, Tomo would have had to get really creative in order to defeat Metropolitan Man as the anti-hero has an insta-kill. Now, when Tomo dies, his angel Luda takes him to the afterlife, and we will learn something interesting. Luda did not want to be part of the contest, so he chose someone who could be taken out early so that he could be finished with the whole thing and just sit back and relax. That led me to the question of what is the motivation of an angel to want to have a winning human? We learn from the current god that he's getting older and wants to choose someone younger to replace him. While the human winner's grand prize is to become god, the angel who the human is paired with stops being an angel and lives at the new god's side. We really don't know what that means as it hasn't been revealed yet, but if Luda, one of the 13 angels with an opportunity to experience this grand prize doesn't want it, well, then maybe it's not that great a prize to begin with. He possibly loses something by becoming god's right hand man so to speak. And speaking of angels, let's talk about Nase. She continues to be an interesting character because I can't decide if she's unreliable or if she's actually devious. Between the first episode and this one, she fails to give Manai crucial information. Information that could really hinder him and his chances to win or even stay alive. It's clear that Metropolitan Man's angel detailed everything he would be able to do with his powers and allowed him to flourish. It's possible that Nase senses that Mirai wouldn't use the powers to their full capabilities because of how moral and honest he is, but I believe in full disclosure. Mirai's honesty and moral nature is an aspect that interests me about him. When he sees that Toma is taking control of women, he feels that it's unfair and questions what would stop him from doing such a thing to hundreds of women. Nase reassures him, and this is one of those times when she fails to mention every aspect of an ability, but she reaffirms Mirai that there is a limit to how many people can be manipulated at a time, which is 14, and the effects last 33 days, after which the arrow can't be used on them again. Mirai is content with this, but still doesn't like how Tomo is using his power. We also learn that Mirai really doesn't want to have his own powers and would gladly offer them up. He just wants to be happy. Nase often tells him how he could use his abilities to make himself happier, but he wants to live a mundane life. A happy one, but still mundane. However, she informs him that giving up his powers would ultimately kill him, because each candidate was given Angel's powers as a means to prevent them from dying, because at one point they were all in a situation where they didn't want to continue living. This leads me to that philosophical question of what is happiness? Tomo Rodriguez found happiness by using his arrows to control women and live out his lustful fantasies. Mirai wants to get a good job and just live a simple life. What does Metropolitan want to be happy? And there are still other candidates that have yet to be revealed. What is happiness is a question and theme that I'm going to keep in mind going forward. Themes and philosophy aside, I cannot rave enough about how awesome the opening theme is. It's called Sense by Bandmade for anyone that wanted to know, and it's definitely a banger. Also, the last scene where Metropolitan Man's angel swoops down and catches Mirai off guard was so tense and made me itch for episode 3. So with that, let me know what you thought in the comments below and like and subscribe. I'm an anime, and I'm out. Anime. <laughs>